With its unique HydroVac action, the Welch Allen Ear Wash System is designed to safely, efficiently, and neatly remove cerumen. Easy to learn and easy to use, the low-cost portable ear wash system is the new standard of care for cerumen removal. Here's how to set up the Welch Allen Ear Wash System. Connect the flexible tubing to the pressure chamber. The tube with the black connector, which will suction out water from the ear during the procedure, should be matched to the black port on the side of the chamber. The tube with the blue connector, which will introduce water into the ear, should be matched to the blue port on the lower side of the chamber. A chamber aerator is also available if you're experiencing a great amount of water splash around your sink. The chamber aerator snugly attaches to the bottom of the pressure chamber. Ten feet of tubing is provided with the system so that you can position your patient just about anywhere in the room for maximum flexibility. The tubing is replaceable to keep your unit looking new. Next, remove your current faucet aerator and replace it with the ear wash system snap aerator. Adapters are also included with your ear wash system if needed. And by ordering additional snap aerators from Welch Allen, you can easily make the unit portable so you can use the ear wash system in multiple exam or procedure rooms. Once the snap aerator is attached to the faucet, the pressure chamber is easily attached or removed. And you can still use your sink normally when the ear wash system isn't attached. To attach the pressure chamber to the faucet, pull down the white plastic ring on the top of the chamber and attach the chamber onto the snap aerator. When the unit is firmly in place, release the white plastic ring. The unit should now be securely attached to your faucet. To complete the setup, attach a disposable ear tip to the interface on the irrigation handle. Line up the grooves on the side of the ear tip with the corresponding indentations on the handle interface. Making sure that the tab on the ear tip is on top, press firmly on the ear tip until it is flush against the handle interface. Now you're ready to use the ear wash system. When scheduling a patient for ear irrigation, ask your patient to use a ceruminolytic prior to the appointment. If this isn't possible, apply a few drops of wax softener about 20 minutes before the procedure. While wax softeners aren't necessary, they complement use of the ear wash system. Always inspect the ear before attempting any irrigation. Do not irrigate with this device if a perforated tympanic membrane is documented in the patient's chart or observed on inspection if a perforated tympanic membrane is suspected, or if the tympanic membrane cannot be visualized on inspection. Use clinical discretion if the patient has acute otitis media, chronic or complicated otitis media, PE tubes, or is immunocompromised. Before you begin, run water through the unit by first turning on the cold water all the way. The faucet needs to be turned to its highest level so there's sufficient water pressure. Then, gradually turn on the hot water until the water coming out of the bottom of the chamber feels close to body temperature. The pressure chamber will automatically regulate water pressure variations and will compensate for any sudden surge or drop in pressure from the faucet. Water flow is regulated by the actuator on the handle. When the actuator isn't pressed, only the suction is activated. Pressing on the actuator introduces water into the ear so that you have both water and suction. You can maintain some control over the flow rate by adjusting your force on the actuator. Check the temperature of the irrigating water by looking at the handle's thermal sensor while depressing the water flow actuator. The water temperature sensor will be blue if the water is too cold. When the water is within normal limits for safe and effective irrigation, the sensor will turn white, indicating that it's safe to begin the procedure. If the water temperature ever reaches 110 degrees, the pressure chamber will automatically restrict the flow to the handle, so there's no danger of tissue damage if the water gets too hot. If this happens, water will continue to discharge out of the bottom of the unit. So if you're pressing the actuator and there's no water coming out, chances are that the hot water shutoff system has been activated. For the unit to reset, the water temperature must be brought down to a safe level. Restart the unit by turning the hot water completely off. Run cold water only, then gradually add hot water. These pressure and temperature safety features help make the ear wash system safe and effective for all of your patients. The Welch Allen ear wash system is easy to use by healthcare providers and properly trained allied healthcare professionals.
because patients have varying thresholds of comfort during cleaning, it's a good idea to introduce the sound of the ear wash system suction to your patients before the procedure in order to make them feel more comfortable and to continue asking for feedback during the irrigation. To irrigate the ear, grasp the subject's pinna. Gently pull back to straighten a child's ear canal or up and back for an adult. While maintaining tension on the pinna, insert the tip of the handle into the ear to create a seal. Squeeze the actuator on the handle to release the stream of water, using finger pressure to attain some control of the flow rate. It is important to aim the stream of water toward the ear canal walls by tilting and slowly rotating the handle during irrigation to avoid the risk of perforating the tympanic membrane with direct contact by the stream. Flood the canal with water, allowing the hydrovac action to return the discharge away from the ear. The suction return system will return the vast majority of the discharge away from the ear. With practice, almost all the discharge will be suctioned away. During the irrigation, ask how your patient is feeling. How does that feel? Making sure he or she is not having any discomfort or dizziness. You may also want to glance at the temperature sensor occasionally to make sure it's white and that the temperature is still ideal for the irrigation. You should periodically examine the patient with an otoscope during the irrigation procedure. While doing this examination, you can safely store the handle in the handle rest grip ring located on the side of the pressure chamber. Occasionally, check the transparent filter on the disposable ear tip to visualize the dislodged cerumen that you've collected. When the irrigation is complete, grasp the tab located on the ear tip and pull the ear tip off the handle with a downward motion. This allows you to easily remove the ear tip from the handle and dispose of it. Remember that each ear tip is designed for single use only and must be discarded properly after use.